presence claimed claim over her soul. You weren't able to do anything about it at the moment, so the Dumbala family kindly requested uh, that since you were all Maeve's really only close, close friends, and also close adventurer friends, um, that it was your job to get stronger. So while in the meantime, they diverted all of their financial uh, assets towards trying to find a way to bring her back to life, uh, you all could keep growing. Uh, as you have in a rapid pace over the past month of your journey so far, uh, and you could be ready for what is to come. On that very suspensive high note, Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the party broke up uh, and began dealing with uh, Maeve's death in their own ways. Um, you headed back home uh, to the estate and from there headed into the Dreaming City where you went to the Dawning Cutlass, one of the more finer establishments in town, uh, and began coping through many different ways. Some conversation, um, some just zoning out, um, others through psychotic episodes as Kipley went full cray-cray. Um, she was holding the head of... <laughs> Neep. Neep. Um, such a... Yeah, such a and great I thing. <laughs> um where you uh <laughs> you met the uh very concerned and disturbed uh bar owner uh Bwendel Bunston uh who asked you very kindly to put the head away um and if not gave you a tablecloth which is now covered in blood and used as a mini little hobo sack um the party got Overall, kind of buzzed, Kipley got wasted, um, and had some conversation about what was going next, um, just kind of having psychotic episodes, uh, talking to the head, uh, and, uh, you took notice of a few people that were standing, or, or standing, excuse me, sitting around, uh, the bar with you. Um, one kind of a fat, uh, plump little dragonborn noble, um, one a kind of chiseled looking uh half orc man uh who looked like he was a little more of the upper crust uh sailors um and uh you saw the water genasi who you would go on to uh get their name as ina later on um but not before uh Kipley had a mission um as a bat came in uh some sort of familiar or postman of Vince, uh, came in and dropped you off a note and a lovely little bit of guano on your head, um, giving you the information that, uh, Pearl, uh, had been found and you should come meet him alone, uh, back at Garen's Crossing. And what you did, you took off flying across the sky, um, all the way over there, uh, just to have, uh, a small interaction with the guards, as you'd never really been there, uh, before previously late at night. Um, and, uh, you went inside, dripping blood everywhere, had a conversation with Vince, found out Pearl had been staying at the Rennell family estate, um, Percy's home, to be more specific, for those who don't remember his full name, uh, and had been staying there for the past four days. With that information acquired, um, and some drunk banter as you got even more wasted at Vince's, um... You headed on off back, uh, while Mustang did some investigation, um, began talking with the, uh, Water Genasi, uh, after banging on about, I think it was four, yep, four doors, um, before actually finding hers, uh, and causing a whole last scene and ruckus, uh, while doing so, uh, and for some, uh, pretty decent persuasion checks, uh, and a little bit of banter, learns that, uh, Ina was from... Uh, the Plain of Water, um, was a loud and proud water genasi, uh, and clearly had more, uh, connections and details that she kept hidden for her own, uh, just personal safety as she gave Mustang as little as possible, um, and was more giving questions towards him as well. Um, curious about the ghostly gunman, uh, and, uh, after a while, Mustang found that he wasn't really going to get the answers of his current state from her, as she didn't recognize what he was, um, and was more concerned with 
what a smoky being that could potentially be from the fire plane was doing here. Um, so Mustang decided to up and leave, but not before he heard the cocking of a gun. Uh, a flintlock pistol firing off in the middle of the night uh, caused a chase scene that, uh, with the help of Kipley uh, and the keen perceptive eye of Mustang, uh, the party managed to chase out and track down Bob the Gob. Um, Bob the Goblin, uh, a small little creature sent to assassinate um, Ina, by who, who knows, um, had a brief conversation uh, with all of you uh, as the one who actually captured him and was uh, holding him until you guys got there was Duradon, a massive, bulky, and tall frame of a man, um, seemingly human, uh, was uh, holding this goblin in the statue uh, and aided in somewhat interrogating slash almost murdering him. Um, clearly was open to the idea as well. Uh, and uh, also had a brief moment mind melding with Ina as she arrived on the scene, uh, sharing a strange and rare connection of psychic power. Um, however, uh, after Goblin was doing anything but giving you answers and was just talking his little uh, night away um you all decided that it was time to try and use force unfortunately the stealth of this party interrogating the goblin uh his screaming uh you waterboarding him uh and a whole bunch of other non-stealthy means caused the guards to be alerted and as they all approached you the goblin finally, after multiple escapes of trying to attempt, s succeeded against Duradon's uh, massive strength uh, and began another chase uh, for the town, which for him uh, wasn't very long as uh, Mammoth took off in his newly acquired broom uh, and kept pace, lighting up the sky with arrows, uh, little, his little star base arrows, um, giving off his location. Uh, we had a, a almost terrible moment uh, where the goblin tried to steal the broom from Mammoth. Luckily, he rolled shit, but uh, Mammoth rolled a little less shit. Uh, and you ended up pushing him off the broom with infestation. One of the most amazing uses of that spell. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, all of you began tracking him down where he was cornered into a small part of of the city street, uh, and with the aid of Duradon, uh, Kipley causing his mind to crumble, thinking the world around him was also crumbling, uh, and uh, Rupert, he surrendered. The guard all catching up, put him in chains, and got some information from you, learning that you were all vassals, uh, and all of the curiosity of what you were doing beforehand slowly faded away. Um, and as they were bringing him in for questioning, you watch as his head popped. Um, out of the blue, uh, this goblin's head exploded, um, covering the street in gore and blood, uh, and giving you little to no answers. But just before it did, Kipley had the wonderful idea to dive into his mind, uh, and got a little... A little bit more than what you expected. You saw Bob the Goblin holding the gun towards Ina as Mustang was walking away, and there was a moment of recognition, as he didn't know exactly who Mustang was, but his resemblance to the one who hired him was uncanny. So, as he went to go shoot, he was thrown off guard, missing what would have been a clean headshot. Uh, and ended up just nailing Ina in the shoulder. Um, you also know that this goblin was not very smart because he got scammed for all of this. He ended up dead for essentially what was supposed to be uh, 40 platinum, which was actually just painted over silver. Um, poor guy. 
<laughs> all of you uh, rejoined uh, up as a group uh, and uh, got a little bit of information from Duradon, uh, in which he gave uh, Kipley um, that he was sent to protect her. Um, and didn't give a whole lot of details, but just mentioned that you were cut from the same cloth uh, and both had a similar benefactor looking out for you. Um, which you know very well as Evelyn Kroll, and that he was to uh, escort you on your journey, making sure that now that Maeve, the previous uh, tank and uh, just overall mother slash protector figure of the group had died, um, that she wanted to protect her asset uh, for whatever was to come. This was met with a number of emotions um, as Kipley began to kick at Duradon uh, to try and uh, escape his grasp as he kind of just held her up um, after questioning her. Uh, and the party received it with a little bit of tension, um, a little bit of concern, but packed it away as uh, even though it is a required uh, new ally um, under Evelyn Kroll's law, a new ally is still more than appreciated going into the dangerous journey that you are as you be begin your journey to Mistrin. But just before you did go, the morning of your departure, you saw that Kira was waiting for you downstairs in the Donning Cutlass, telling you that there was a small funeral being held in the town square for Maeve Dumbala. Still... It was more of a formality, as both the house and uh, House Dumbala and all of you knew that she wasn't fully gone. There was still some way that you could attempt to save her. But in honor of respecting her and respecting that, all that she was in life, and the slim possibility that you do fail, one was still held anyways. Some of you gave general speeches, such as Mustang. You heard from a few NPCs, and you heard a fucking 10 out of 10 Air Captain Erwin level speech from Kipley um, <laughs> demanding vengeance for what had been done to her and the party, um, and all of which how uh, her interactions with Maeve uh, had made such a large impact on her and those around her, uh, which was fantastic. And finally, you heard one small bit um, from Percival Rennell, um, as he cherished what uh, Maeve was in life, um, how their growing connection affected him, uh, and went on to reveal that uh, he too, in her name, would take the same path that she vowed to do in life of becoming a not a person but a creature that could rival the power of the monarchs that currently reigned over paradise peak so they could protect all that they cared about no matter who or what was standing in their way however he stated he could not do it alone and revealed for the first time since she left you in those dark cold caverns beneath the sea. Pearl Veridin, still alive for now, uh, and uh, joined together in a speech uh, declaring that they would set off together in an attempt to rescue Maeve's soul from the hells as their first stepping stone into becoming the ones who could potentially rival monarchs. This was met with some distaste uh, from certain individuals who you've come to know uh, as Belle Estelle, uh, the dragon, uh, excuse me, the daughter of the uh, Monarch of Dragons, um, and a slight pulse of energy from the Monarch of Dragons himself. Uh, as it seems, every time you mention the name, it's very much like Voldemort. You don't say that shit out loud because it's very stupid to question the person who's protecting you from threats from afar. Um, and even though some people in the crowd uh, went unconscious or were forced to their knees as before. Um, all of you previously feeling the effect uh, managed to stay upright uh, as well as Pearl and Percy. 
um, and they walked off together. Um, also, you got to hear, um, as uh, at the end of last session, um, Megan mentioned, you got to hear Pearl's real voice um, <laughs> as surprise, motherfuckers. Um, all the all the all the NPCs that are closest to the party are British. Um, she had been deceiving you for quite some time, uh, and uh, together they both walked off as we ended the session. And that is where we're going to pick off again tonight. As the funeral comes to a close, the party has a few things uh, that they need to do before they head off on their journey to Mistrin once again. Uh, now, uh, this can be done any order of what you'd like, or some of these doesn't even have to be done. But if there's any items or places that you'd like to visit on the island before you leave, now would be the time to do so. Um, there was the previous mention of buying crew, um, which I am not going to make you talk to one bajillion NPCs to try and crew up your ship. Um, however, we did discuss the ability to hire experts. Um, I do have a number of those prepared. Uh, and if you would like, um, all of which uh, can and will be found at the dawning cut list if you still would wish to hire them for the journey um they're not necessary but as stated before they do give a pretty large uh benefit uh in terms of their modifiers for making roles that you would have to make in their stead um and as we've come to learn not a lot of you guys are proficient in water vehicles and water related uh checks so um that is uh on the docket um renaming your ship is on the docket as they said the repairs would take a day which means they'd be ready to sail by this evening um so renaming the ship is on there as well uh and uh choosing whether or not you guys would want a captain to run that ship um as you do know at least one captain um Zyrus Amaril, the one who captained your ship back to shore when it originally um, was bleeding to death <laughs> on its way uh, back to Paradise Peak. Um, but also others could be found. Uh, and uh, again, anything else that you would like to do, um, whether in or out of character, uh, related to the island and everyone that is there. With all of that in mind, I will leave it I will pass it over to you. <laughs> I'll leave it over to you. <laughs> so, anything that you guys would like to do? Mm. I think we should get a crew, and I thought we had talked about it a little bit before, because we had, what was it, 250 gold left over? After all of these ship's repairs and uh, upgrades made, um, it is 250 gold left over, yes. Okay. Um, you know, each expert cost 50 gold. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that you really uh, require slash are recommended uh, would be a Bozeman. Uh, so you can passively heal the ship while at sea. Mm -hmm. Um a navigator so you actually can navigate the ship without using mammoths uh once a day navigation tool that only lasts for an hour um and a captain who can actually helm your ship um who and what level of those that you would like to buy is up to you um experts are 50 gold standard crew uh so those who aren't expertise uh and just have regular proficiency is only going to cost you 20 gold um and this is per month um so it's 20 gold per month uh oh, or wow. you can attempt to do it by yourself i mean well yeah but it's not going to take you too long to get there and back um on ship it's only going to be a week and a half's journey to mistrin from your current charting um no that's way cheaper than i thought it was gonna be well i mean you say it's cheap but you guys have gotten a lot of gold recently, and, like, the average, like, 
average cost for a normal sailor like is not a not really a good standard of living you only get paid for a few months out and then afterwards you're looking for another job again so in terms of the average like wealth of the community you guys are now fighting to get into the upper crust at least with your current gold and situation which could all be very quickly spent and gone who knows um <laughs> but yeah no you guys you guys are pretty well off right now so but 20 gold per normal um 50 per expert um and there was um there was the mention a very brief mention um that uh since you got in that 20 previously uh captain zyra said to talk to her for renaming the ship um but also for going out on the adventure so you might have a potential captain who's willing to negotiate uh how much they're willing to go for but other than that all the other uh roles are pretty much uh set in stone i forgot to think of a ship name this week well you guys did drop a potential last time did we i don't know if you'd still like to go with it yep yeah mustang had said something but I dragon's don't vow yes that's what it was. was the potential brought up it sounded like everyone was semi-okay with it but i did not officially write it down in case that we came up with something tonight that was better or y'all wanted to go with something different no actually i do like that i like yeah, it too man. Yeah, I thought I thought they said Dragon's Bow. That Dragon's <laughs> Bow is great. Dragon's yeah. Bow. All right. Is that the ship name that you guys want to go with? I think so. Yeah. All right. So, uh, who who would like to go over and have that conversation with Captain Amaril? Mustang. <laughs> who is currently <laughs> present along with Mustang would like to go over and have that conversation with Captain Amaril Amaril, excuse me uh, I suppose I'm probably uh, I'll, I'll go with uh, yeah, I'll go with you sure. Sure. Mustang is alright let's go get this ship named uh, and Shh. you both I, hey, it's gonna be shitty, all right. <laughs> I was gonna say I we can all go. know I'll this. go too. Um, any, anyone's welcome. I this is just you guys like splitting up after the funeral to get stuff done and ready as you're beginning to prepare for your journey. I'll go along too because I don't really have anything else. Cool. That I can think of to do inside of town. So, Fuck it, I'll go too. Oh, <laughs> Fuck it. All right, Everybody dirt on you coming going. too. Hey, yeah, I, this is this is just me seeing if anyone would like to break off uh, for like I, time constraints, but everyone yes, is welcome. Uh, obligation requires that. I sure. Stand okay. First. Yeah. <laughs> so the the entire party heads down to the docks, the southern docks, where you know uh, Captain Zyrus is located. Uh, and Mammoth, going off of memory of last, uh, you saw uh, where she was summoned um, when the uh, dock gnome helped lead you in. Um, you make your way over to her office, um, which is like, it's not amazing, uh, but it is pretty beautiful and well off for being in the Southern Docks, which is the shittier part of town, um, as it is located uh, just before you actually uh, reach the port itself. Um, you see Captain Zyrus as you all enter. Um, it's just a small boat. Um, and you see there's a couch um, there's a few paintings hanging on the wall. Um, you can see some of the depictions in the paintings is of Captain Zyrus her, uh, herself. Um, some on the seas at the helm of the ship. Um, some you can see blades out and blood kind of splattered across her. She's fighting uh, what looks like to be a massive, um, a massive spherical creature with these stalks with eyes in them uh, protruding from it. Um, you can see uh, just a standard desk uh, and chair she's sitting behind. Uh, and that's about it. There is not a whole lot to it as she's kind of doing paperwork as you arrive. And goes, oh, um, wonderful to see you all uh, arrive so early in the morning. Um, and she, she kind of stacks up the papers and moves them aside. 
So have you all decided on uh, what would you like to do with the ship? Oh, and here is, she takes a small sack of coins and shoves it across the table, your money. Um, it's ready to be chiseled in. Uh, the sealed deal has been taken off. So, what is the plan? So we have the name. Right. Or did we? No, we didn't tell you. Uh, you did not. You were conflicted when you were previously asked. Consider us conflicted? No more. And she, <laughs> she take, smiles. Uh, uh, I'll write it down for them. <laughs> and you write down the dragon's vow? Yes. She looks at it, looks at you. Very well. Uh, it'll only take a few minutes to have this in. The ship will be done uh, by this evening. If you would like to leave port then, that can be arranged. Um, but I do know, and she swivels around in her chair and reaches into a small cabinet, pulling out um, a few uh, documents and putting them back onto the table. She swivels back around. Uh, you did ask me to um, list any of my previous acquaintances that were capable on the seas. And I have a few recommendations. Um, it is not required that you hire any of these fellows. Um, however, it is under my deep uh, recommendation that you at least consider uh, having a conversation with them. And you see she displays um, a few different um, names uh, and descriptions uh, onto the table in front of you. She goes, I do believe that you uh, all haven't actually sailed a ship yourselves before. So a navigator uh, would be of your uh, best regard. Um, I at least know uh, one who sailed with me personally. Uh, her name is New Feynman. Um, she is uh, a very capable uh, and extraordinarily talented uh, navigator, knower of all stories, rumors, um, and basically any information that is required on the open seas. Um, slides another forward. Uh, Jorg uh, is one of the best bowsmen that you can get out of Paradise Peak. Um, a bit expensive, um, but if you are ever needing of repairs in the midst of a battle, combat, or devastating storm, uh, he can make that slightly more manageable to make sure your ship doesn't sink. Um, and one I believe you've already met, and she slides forward, uh, the last of the three, goes, uh, Ina, um, what a genossi friend of mine, haven't actually sailed for myself, but she has been hired multiple times under my uh, prior recommendation. Um, she is an expert translator. Uh, there is 16 known languages that are used commonly throughout uh, the Shrouded Isles, um, and uh, she speaks 12 of them. So, uh, she it's very useful to have someone who can translate and negotiate um, with both monsters, pirates, general threats that you would come across. Um, if you are looking to deal with any kind of um, trade, uh, any sort of uh, negotiations in general, I would suggest that you would look into her. Um, and for Captain, uh, I do have a few recommendations as well, but, um, and she pauses for a second. You said you were journeying to Mistrin? Yes. Do you have a plan of where you'd be going after that, or is it a wait and see kind of deal? Um, I mean... That was kind of our main direction at this point. However, obviously, wherever the winds take us from there, but 
How right. do you ask? Well, I am a very curious woman at my core. Uh, and I haven't been on the seas in a while. Uh, and I looked at your previous uh, documents uh, and going off of what your um, your party was previously consisted of. Uh, and I noticed that you are in uh, dire need of a cleric. And your previous journey, I think, is a very obvious sign of that. Um, I can offer you a few handful of captains who are very good at their job uh, and uh, have a very, you know, varying degree of skills that could be offered. Uh, however, it has been a while since I stepped foot out on the salty waters once more. And I do happen to possess a certain ability of both healing and combat-related magic. I'm not necessarily cheap, but considering you've done a great deal by dealing with the uh, bandits who previously donned your vessel, with mine cutting you a deal. Really? What kind of deal? Well, I <laughs> captained many ships back in my day and have been on a number of adventures myself. Uh, so I'm not exactly cheap when it comes to purchasing me as a captain. However, I can offer you five men who would be willing to sail with me until doomsday itself. Utter loyalty, healing capabilities both on and off the battlefield, and a damn good conversationist. Such storyteller. That is like quite stories. interesting. Yeah. But she looks know. at you as you say that, Mama. <laughs> I assure you, anything that I spun or weaved into your little head, my friend, you could imagine it perfectly as if you were there. I also think that you would like a number of them. Mammoth, it was. Yep. Have you seen your beasts that you've been named after? I uh, know. I have. Whoa, really? Furry beasts with tusks protruding from their face. Mm. Wandering around a cold Iceland. Oh. They're normally passive the creatures, but once you get close, they smell quite bad. She gives you a smile as she looks at you with that. Are they friendly? Um, as long as you don't get close to the children, um, yes. Cool. Might want to give them a little bit of leeway in general. Large creatures tend to step on things smaller than them all the time. But that is a story for another day. So... You haven't mentioned how much. Right. Um, average captain can get you anywhere between 20 and 50 gold per month. Um, considering all of my skills, prior experience, and just general status. Gives you a very wide grin. I normally have a going rate of um, 400 gold per month. Mm -hmm. However, factoring in all that you've done, mm -hmm. and my genuine curiosity for what you are all about... 200 gold per month. That's very interesting. Mm. You all are very interesting vassals. And I had not been to Mistrin in a while, so it'd be nice to pop by. It would be nice. You've been out there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but was what? 50, 60 years ago? You're healing capabilities yes what does that consist of like do you still need to be alive or are you capable of <laughs> reaching beyond the grave i can hear minor 
minor wounds, cure paralysis, poisons, and if you give me the components required to do so, I can bring someone back from the brink of death. But it is quite expensive, as death is um, not something that the poor can escape. Tiffany kind of squints her eyes a bit. So, the list of the other captains. Yes. Um, well, Captain Jawbreaker, um, I uh, believe you have not personally met with him before, uh, has sailed a number of years, general uh, trading missions, um, hasn't seen too much combat, but is not a slacker himself. Um, Half-orc gentleman. Uh, hasn't... Uh, isn't really aligned with any of the more uh, spellcasting arts, but is known to be a bit of a, uh, well, sales hold. Um, certainly not a bad candidate. Um, and one other, she kind of flips for a few pages, um, Zevris Zaval. Um, he is an interesting fellow. Um, I haven't seen him in a number of years, but I heard that he hasn't exactly been uh, too active on the seas of recent. Uh, but give him enough coin and uh, a few promises for future jobs, I'm sure he'll warm up to you. I mean, general crew adore him. Uh, and he carries a lot of respect for his previous deeds on the waters. Just he's a bit of a... Um, how do I put this nicely? Acquired taste. By rich people? Uh, well, no, no, not necessarily. Um, he does hold himself in quite high regards, but um, he also has a, um, a trap that doesn't shut. And it's a little ambitious mm. when it comes to, um, I, I would not disclose that information to future clients, never mind. I mean, are you talking like he wants to take over the ship or he wants to take on the monarchy? <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, only idiots would question, uh, monarch's authority. Um... No offense given, um, but um, it, it's more of he loves to go on uh, adventures that, you know, kind of bites off more than he can chew. Hmm. He's not weak by any regards. He has a number of uh, missions and stories under his belt, but just it seems like you're going into a rather dangerous territory. So I don't know if you'd be the best candidate. But you are the ones who decide how you run your ship, so that's up to you. Well. Alright, so our choices for Captain are Jawbreaker, Severus, or you? Yes. What was your name again? <laughs> Zyrus Amaril holds out her hand. And the translator, Ina? Ina, yes. Navigators? New Fabian. Newt. New. 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 Yep. Yeah. N-U-E. Famous. Fabian. Famous. Close enough. Sure. Okay. And the bossman? <laughs> Uh, Bosman Jorg. Jorg. It's Dragonborn that's about the size of five Dragonborn combined, so hard to miss. All right. Well, thank you. Goodbye. Of course. Ship will be ready by this evening. 
new name and all. Make sure you come pick it up. Or at least let us know how long it's going to be docked here. Right. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know what everyone decides on. Of course. Until we meet again. And uh, as you all leave, um, you can see your ship um, out in the port, not too far off, only a few hundred feet away. Um, just just a multitude of repairmen um, working on the sides. Uh, instead of doing patchwork jobs like you uh, have seen many ships in the past uh, go under while traveling at sea, you can see they are replacing boards. Um, you see some actually are trying to keep uh, the general aesthetic of gold uh, as a few uh, are just cleaning and repairing and buffing up the deck. Um, and it is, uh, it's looking, it's looking much better than what you previously wrote in on. Uh, the helm has been, uh, taken out and is being replaced by a new helm. Um, and you see as it's, uh, being kind of, uh, put together, um, piece by piece on the bow of the ship, um, all of your, all of the uh, work being put in will be done, at least later this evening. Um, but until then, uh, where would you guys like to go next? Or what would you like to discuss next? Yeah, as soon as we're outside and kind of seeing the ship and everything, Kipley would just turn to the party and... All right. What, what do you... What do you... Rick, just what do you think? I, I already have my opinions, but I want to hear yours. I honestly think she would be best as captain. I know she's expensive, but really for our first trip out, I think it would be best to get her this time around. Yeah, um, no, she's a complete bitch. Well, I mean... I don't know if we're going to find a nice captain. I mean, we can talk to him, to a jawbreaker and see if you like. No, no, no. No, I'm I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah, keep going. Uh, I don't know if we would need a translator. That's, that's up to you guys, but I think we could probably save some gold on that end. I definitely think we should get the Bozeman for repairs. Uh, just to be on the safe side. That's okay. And then, uh, navigator wise, you know, I, I guess it couldn't hurt. But I think the captain and the bozeman are probably the top, the top two to get. Yeah. I like Zyrus, but if you guys don't think she's the best, then we don't have to go with her. Why do you like her? She seems like she knows what she's doing. Well, a lot of people seem like they know what they're doing, but they don't. Yeah. Oh, you haven't even met the other ones. Like, what if she was totally speaking down on them? Because she wants to come. You don't like her very much, huh? No. How come? I just think she thinks a lot of herself. And I hmm. think she looks down on us. And looks at us as an opportunity. For herself. The good point. Well then, we should go talk to the other guys then. Kind of looks at the rest of the group, realizes Duradon's there, and just kind of <laughs> does like a double take and oh, are you are you coming with us? Yeah. <laughs> do you? Well, ye. Do you have an opinion on all of this? Um. DM, the individual that Kipley currently does not like, 
also <laughs> coincidentally happens to be the cleric, correct? Um, yes. Zyrus, okay. Amaril, uh, the dock master is, uh, mm -hmm. didn't tell you uh, what, uh, kind of cleric she was, but just mentioned she was a cleric. Uh, Duradon, uh, is simply going to say, Your track record precedes you, and, you know, if the last time you left out of here, one of you died, I guess having a cleric, regardless of what you personally feel, is objectively the best thing. It's not like she's wanting to be your best friends or your compatriots for life or even asking to join your adventuring party but just statistically and historically speaking your record is losing men as soon as you leave and if you want to do better at least until you're okay that's, stronger that's a great opinion that's that's good cool Kipsy kind of pulls down one of her ears. Just kind of like worries at the bottom of it. Alright, um. What about the, the others, though? The translator, Bozeman, navigator? What do you think about them? Well, I mean, you're from this uh, room. How many languages are there there? I mean, it... I haven't been there in a while. Uh, when I left it, it was it was in ruins, so I wouldn't think there would be a whole lot. But there's no telling who all's taken up a place there in the last twenty years. All right, say we say we hire Zyrus. Two hundred gold. Plus the trans... No, I'm sorry. Plus the navigator and the bosman. Those are each... What does she say? 50 gold each? Yeah. If you want to hire an expert, yes. But you don't have to. So... 300 gold for a month. For the captain, navigator, bosman. Do we have to pay extra for the five people she brings along with her? No, she said the 200 gold came with... Uh, her five trusted okay. crew members. And then if we really want to use her to her full ability, we probably need to spend an extra 300. If we... If we're just going there and back, would we really need a navigator? Because I've been out there, she's been out there. Uh, make me an intelligence check with this. Oh, okay. Oh. Ten? It was still very low DC. It was ten. Uh -huh. um, still very chillingly <laughs> close, but... <laughs> right. Um, Don't you have uh, the tiles? I always... No. I need to write who I, I fucking gave that to. You, I think you haven't given it to anyone yet. I thought Reese had it. I think, I, I think yeah, I think you either gave it to, well, no, you gave it to Reese, and then she handed it back to you after the ritual, I think. Uh. So I think it's up in the air who actually has it. We can, I'll have to look back to remember, but I don't think anyone definitely has it that is right. here at the moment. Um, so might want to might want to mark down who has that before you go out. But right. um, ten <laughs> ten is still enough. Um, navigators uh, in general, excuse me. It's not uh, just for navigating a course or like charting out a course and following it because of the nature of Paradise Peaks oceans um, and constant moving landscape. Uh, navigators are one of the few people in the world who hold very precious and valuable items. Um, one of which is a compass that always points north. So you always know where you are, even in this 
constant ever flux of a world. You always can get to your uh, you can always get to your location, even if you're caught in a storm or uh, you end up having your island moved or anything like that. You have a much oh, higher okay. chance of success if you hire a navigator. Does that mean you need to hire a navigator to know where the location is? No. Um, Zyra says she has been there before, so you could, if you're just playing going to Mission Room Back, you think it's reasonable to believe you could maybe do that with just Cyrus, but if mi if Mission has moved or has mm -hmm. any islands moved in front of it or around it, that's where a navigator comes in. And is it necessary for it? No, that, that's just me explaining it. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to make you spend more gold. That well, is completely no. up to you guys. Well, that and if there's some kind of storm and we get thrown off course, we may. I feel like... That's a good point. I mean, I've been on a dweller long enough. There are plenty of times we went weeks without knowing where we were. We can get the navigator then. So the captain, bozeman, and navigator. So three, three hundred gold. That comes with five crew to help run it. And then, how much do we think we can? I remember you have two hundred and fifty spending on top of this. Sorry to interrupt. But you 200. have two hundred and fifty gold given to you for this purpose. Oh, remind me who we got that from? That's, that just came with your, um, the bounty from, that you got oh, on the head of Captain Zarbog. Yeah, Mo the majority of it's putting in into your ship because it's, it's, it, it's expensive <laughs> to, um, it's expensive to repair a ship that was okay. as da badly damaged as yours, but. So we only need 50 gold. Yeah. And then on top of that. Okay. All right. It's yeah, not coming out of any of your personal banks that's until you go past it. Totally doable. All right. All right. I'm sorry I was so contradictory. No, don't don't apologize. I mean, we getting the math is hard. Yeah, thinking is hard. It is. God agrees. All right. Um. Okay. She will shuffle back into the off, like pop her head back inside. Is that Cyrus? Hello? You don't have to yell, I'm right here, dear. Yes. So we are going to go with um, Navigator New, Bosman right. York. Jolk, yes. And, um,. She just stares at you. <laughs> Kipley struggles for a moment. I guess you, you know, you, you want to come along. As I said before, it's been quite some time since I've captained a ship. Yeah, no, I heard and it. You You're coming along. Very where you're hired. People. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I will have my affairs in order by, uh, well. This evening, um, but if you would like to have it ready to uh, leave by this evening or by tomorrow morning, I can have it uh, done by then. What kind of items do you need to keep us safe? Oh, um, for Revivify, all I need is a 300 gold uh, worth of diamonds. So it doesn't have to be like a large chunk of one, as long as you have like a bag of diamonds or, um, if you don't want an actual, um, 300 gold worth of actual. Uh, in particular, it would be good to find that here. I mean, Guildhall offers quite uh, a large sum. For both components and spectrum. Alright. But if not, uh, there's a few magic shops in the Cloud District that sells it. Okay. Uh, Kipley pops back outside. Hey, when, when do we want to leave? Uh, we 
we could leave this evening, I guess. Unless it's best to leave in the morning, so we're not... Right. But I guess it wouldn't matter. It is best in the morning. You hear from inside the shop. <laughs> okay, but he just I mean, we can leave eyes. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> in the morning then. I'm willing to do whatever you guys want. That'll give us time to do whatever we need to do here. And not have to rush to get everything done by this evening. Alright. Okay, Zyrish, you've made an excellent point. We've decided to go with it. We're leaving in the morning. Do you need the right. gold now? Um, as long as you have it ready for when we're ready to leave, that's fine. Alright. But if you'd like to give it now, it's perfectly acceptable as well. Okay. All right, so am I marking down, we're going with New and Jorg and I for your hires. Is that who you'd like to work with? I certainly wouldn't mind. Jorg okay. and I are mates, and New's a very trusted individual. I just need to know who I'm rounding up from the tavern, unless you want to do that yourselves. Oh no, you, I, I, we would greatly appreciate it if you didn't mind. We trust yeah, your judgment. I summon them there for the sole purpose of it. So, um, just the three of us, then. I think for this trip, anyway, yeah. All right, very well. Let me know when you're ready to leave, and I will be waiting here with the rest. Uh, actually, we'll start um, getting our affairs in order for ship's quarters and all of that. All right. Thank you. All right. Until we meet again, very soon. And you just hear like sound of like like furniture being moved around very quickly, um, and just the sounds of just discord as she goes into packing mode. <laughs> she didn't know you're gonna say yes or no. So, uh, cool. <laughs> um, you hired the cleric. Fuck yes. How much extra gold do we all need to? Um, for all of this, I believe, um, so you got the Bozeman, you got the Navigator, which is 100, and you hired Zyrus, which is 200. So for this month is just 300 gold. Since you chose to, uh, void, uh, Ina. And we had the 250 already, so we just... And you had 250, 50 so just 50, uh, amongst everyone, yeah. Okay. So, what, uh... Just say, like, 10 gold? Ah, uh, if you'd like, yeah. Mustang's sitting pretty, and Reese is also sitting pretty on gold. I'm sure they wouldn't mind. All right. I can message them about it later as well. So, then Duradon doesn't need to put in then 5, 10, 15, no, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, 10, 10 gold off. That. And then Kipley would absolutely stop by the guild hall and pick up some 300 worth of... Um, 300 golds worth of section? Yeah. Cool. Um, and even if it is not used for the purpose of Revivify, it can also be used to fuel um, all of your lappers... Um, or any other equipment that is used by that. So okay. go ahead and write down the inventory 300 GP worth of sex room. Okay. Uh, are you paying that out of pocket or is the party yeah. also splitting that? Perfect. No, okay. She's just putting it out. Hell yeah. So if one of you goes down, you now have the ability to cast or vivify. Nice. If Cyrus <laughs> saves the spell slots for it. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She had fruit. fucking better. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, anything else anyone's doing while uh, Kipley goes to the guild hall? Land store? Yeah. Would you like to go down and find a herbalist? Yeah. Make me either perception, investigation, or persuasion to try and talk or find your way to a store. Perception it is. <laughs> Perception. Perception. 16. Cool, cool. 
you make your way for town, just kind of wandering about. Uh, is anyone going with Mammoth, or is Mammoth going by himself? By himself, excuse me. I had somewhere else I was going to go. Cool. Um, so Mammoth is walking the streets by himself as he uh, kind of rounds a few corners. You make your way more in um, in the northern districts of town. It's a little, it's a little nicer. Um, you see there is a small sign that is just like, it's one of those corner shops that you pass by and you have to look back and make sure it's actually a shop before you go in. There's a very small wooden sign with a bit of ivy growing around it. Um, and it is hitched between two much larger stores. Um, and you see it reads Bentley's Burrow. And it looks like, um, uh, just based off of the design of the, um, of the sign, you see there's like a small, um, a small teacup with what looks like these few evergreens popping out of it. Uh, it looks like it could be potential uh, herbalist, uh, either office or dwelling. Uh, all right, let's head inside. Cool. You walk on in, you hear ting, ding, 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 ding. Uh, and you hear, what? Hello? Yeah, hi. Who goes there? Uh, Mammoth. Mammoth who? Mammoth. Mammoth, Mammoth. Pleasure to meet you, Mammoth. The name's Bentley. Hi, Bentley. And you can see this older-looking, uh... It, they appear to be a gnome, but the de like the counter that they're standing behind is about, like, four or five feet tall. And you can see their heads just barely cresting above it. Um, and you hear it, one moment, and you hear, Arr! and you see their head go boop, 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 boop down as they climb a small little uh, stool down and make their way around the counter to get ghosts kind of eye to eye with you. Uh, and they are, like, you're not like that short for a halfling. Um, and they are pretty short for a gnome. So you're about the same uh, height as he pops up and goes, what can I do for you? Well, I was hoping to get just like a bunch of seeds. A bunch of seeds? Yeah. Of what kind of fauna? I'm not really sure, but I'd love to hear what you have. Well, are you looking for just everyday plants or something exotic? Some that are more useful, more than pretty. Some that are useful more than pretty? Yeah. Hmm. Let me see. Goes and starts uh, kind of like rummaging around in the back of the counter. You see he pulls out a pot and slams it on top of the desk. Um, and it is a small, um, a small, like, almost a little green bush that just barely fits within the pot that it's being held in. Um, and he goes, well, um, this one's already fully grown. I do have a few seedlings, or saplings of these, um, if you would like to purchase. This is an awakened shrub. Go ahead. And it kind of pushes the pot over. Um, you kind of have to, like, reach up to grab it, but he gestures for you to do so if you like. Yeah, I'll take it and examine it. Examine it? Looks like a bush. Oh, <laughs> uh, what does it do? Go <laughs> ahead. Okay. Speak to it. Shake it. Whatever you like. We'll kind of shake it, hold it up to his ear, and say, hello? <laughs> as you shake it, you watch as the form of the bush begins to go from its normally kind of cute, spherical little shape. And you see a little... <laughs> four little appendages stick out of the bush, and the leaves compact to form a slightly humanoid shape as it stands up on two legs 
and you're holding it up to your ear, and you want to just kind of pokes your ear. Um. This shrub can perform simple tasks and can revert to its original state upon command. It cannot speak, but it understands and can communicate through telepathy with whoever bonds with it upon birth. That's pretty cool. Sadly, this one's bound to myself, so I can translate for you if you like. Uh, but um, until you yourself have planted the seed and have taken care and grew it yourself, uh, it won't be able to communicate with you. How long does it take to grow? Um, it can depend um, solely without the aid of magic or um, disdainful conditions. Um, three weeks? Just shy of a month? Uh, out of character. How long with Druidcraft? Like an instant or? Uh, with Druidcraft, much faster. Okay. Uh, Druidcraft, like you have to apply it like every day, but it'll probably only take you about five days. Okay. Um, and how much is it? If you're looking to buy just one sapling, it's called an even fifty gold. Oh. They do last until they are either burnt to a crisp or die of withering old age. How long until that happens? Um, probably longer than most of us will live. Oh. Okay, Quite I'll take a long it. Time. Wonderful. Um, and you see he reaches in the back and goes, uh, Would you like one that is um, a sapling or seed? What's the difference? saplings have already uh, had time to gestate and grow themselves so it will be a little bit of a quicker uh, growing time however um, they are already bonded so you would have to only communicate through hand signals with them for actions that you like them to take or anything that you like to communicate um, saplings uh, seeds excuse me um, are going to be uh, fresh um, and you're going to have to grow them for a little bit longer, but it will be yours, and you will have your telepathic bond with it. Cool. Yeah, I'll just get a seed. Very well. And you see he takes out a small little uh, a small little sack, deposits one oh, looks like a pistachio in it, um, and slides it across the counter. I need to give him 50 gold? Yep. Alright. Thank you for your purchase. Uh, anything else that you'd like to look at? What else do you have? Um, I do have uh, a number of ailments, um, ointments, excuse me, that can be used on an ailing individual. They say that you are poisoned by an eel of the sea, or perhaps stung by a scorpion. <laughs> I can provide you something to relieve your pain temporarily, and not cure, but for a brief time mitigate any poisons. Hmm. What about, like, pumpkin seeds? I hear those are cool. <laughs> um, right. I do have a pumpkin. I, 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 they're not in season right now. Um, oh, that doesn't matter. But, um, I think I might have some. Okay. So it's only it's only uh, two silver um, for five seeds. Uh, I'll get however much a gold can get me. Oh boy, <laughs> that's twenty five pumpkin seeds. Sure, that that should be fine. Very well. Um, do you require the proper? I just want to warn you ahead of time. Uh, I don't know where you're uh, planning on keeping these, but, you know, gourds, uh, do they still do need soil to grow in. Do you have pots for these already? A uh, planter box? I can provide one if you don't. 
Um, yeah, that would be helpful, actually. Um, if you'd like to store all of these in one, they aren't necessarily large pumpkins. Um, you could fit them in one planter box, uh, including your awakened shrub. Um, we'll call it an even gold piece for all your previous purchases. Uh, sure. Very well. Um, one moment. Uh, and he just kind of skitters to the back, and you hear, uh, the sound of gnomish grunts he just hell, hell, eh, eh, uh, uh, as he tries to knock the door uh, ajar and eventually hear doof as he sets it down opens the door picks it back up and shuffles it back over uh, not putting it on the countertop so you don't have to reach up and get it but just placing it in front of you it's a large planter box um, how how strong is mammoth <laughs> Uh, I think exactly uh, average. Oh, he's no, got, yeah, he's... no, you're, 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 you have a 12, so you're, you're actually slightly above average. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you, for your size, it's, it's not gonna be one of the things, like, it's too heavy for you to carry. It's just one of those very awkward to carry objects. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have all the seeds that he just kind of places on top of it. Um, and, uh, it. You can walk it back to the to the ship, but it's just going to be one hell of a challenge. Um, go ahead and give me... Uh, let's just call this a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> As you try and maneuver your way through town. Hey. We'll 15? Perfect. Okay. You definitely... <laughs> and, and nimbly make your way through the crowds of people... Um, you can see everyone just kind of gives you strange looks as you walk past with a full planter box in your hand. Um, and you can, uh, you can bring it on over to the Dragon's Vow if you want. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You bring it back to the ship and you can begin the process of, uh, setting up all of your plants and your awakened shrub. Nice. Uh, and I can also just, I'll post that in a uh, general chat in case anyone would like to see the stat block, but I'll also add it to your sheet. Okay. Because it is, it, is it is a creature. It is a creature. So you're now the owner of an awakened shrub seed. Oh my god, that's a real thing? It is. <laughs> it's never used, but when you, you messaged me, I think like two, three weeks ago, and you're oh, like, I, I might go shopping for like, you know, like seeds and stuff like that, and I was like, Fuck, I have to prepare seeds. So <laughs> I got I had a few ready. I didn't think you'd buy a shrub though, because it's 50 gold. <laughs> I got gold to spare. <laughs> Alright. Um so I'll, I added it onto your sheet. If you want to change the name, just go under extras and it will be under summoned. Um okay. so you can give it a nickname if you like. But it'll it'll grow within uh five days of Druidcraft. Okay. Uh cool. But while you're doing that, uh Rictus, what did you want to do? Uh, he will make his way towards Ivan and Barrow, the smithing. <laughs> yeah, Ivan Barrow smithings. Yep. Sure. You Very quick journey from the docks, um, only about 20 minutes into sound. Uh, you can see the, uh, Ivan currently um, not manning the forge, but you see the forge... Um, the forge is like on a low burn as it seems he's just finished some work. And he's just kind of thumbing through... Uh, a really kind of beat up uh, book and you see his hands are just covered in soot and every like edge of the page that he touches just leaves a mark um, as he's flipping through and hears you approaching looks up hey it's good to see you um, one moment closes the book puts it in and kind of walks around the counter towards you oh I oh my hands um, give me a moment walks over and you can see there's currently a sword being squelched um which is the, when they put it in water after it's just been heated mm -hmm. and he puts his hands into the water and cleans them off and you can see sizzling dwarven resilience doesn't really matter about whether the <laughs> water's hot or not throw kind of just pats it out and walks over and gives you a handshake what can i do for you uh hey i just had a couple questions um Hi. the ore that we got back from our, yes. Yeah. How much of that did you have left? Did we have some of um, that left? For the armor? Uh, 
Well, I had enough left um, for the orders that were left with uh, Mithril, but I can see oh, if okay. I had any um, leftovers that I didn't use. I don't remember. Um, there was a set of Mithril um, weapons that were being crafted for uh, one of my usual patrons. Uh, they supply uh, stuff to the uh, academies. Uh, so let me let me go see. Let me go see if I have any left real quick. Pops okay. behind the counter. Um, go ahead and roll me a straight luck check. So you're going to roll a 1d20. Um, to have uh, Mithril left over, mm -hmm. you're going to be looking for an 11 or higher. Okay, here we go. That is oh, yeah. no! I, it is a d20 <laughs> roll, so if you want to use inspiration on this, you can, but if not... I will, perfect. yes. Go Let's it. do it. Four to a ten. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see if Kipley had dictated that you I, had God the damn it. I was just thinking to myself <laughs> you would have I should have put it in his pocket this. unfortunately <laughs> so a 10 he pops back around the corner and goes I, I don't have any at the moment uh, it, <laughs> they really bought me out um, for a pretty penny but um, more Mithril should be um, coming in in uh, about a few weeks maybe maybe two or three weeks Okay. I, uh, why are you inquiring? Well, I was just if you had some left over, I was either going to see about maybe making me some armor or maybe just like a pauldron <laughs> or something. Making her some armor or a pauldron? Yeah, just like something to put on the shoulder. If we like, if you only had a little bit left, then I was just going to see if we had enough to make. What would you just... use a pauldron for? No, a pauldron to put on my shoulder. Oh, a pauldron. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, these old you... dwarvish ears. Um, it's okay. Oh, a pauldron, I see. Um, I mean, sure, I would like a full sure. set of armor, but I didn't know how much. Uh, what, uh, how, what's, uh, what uh, specifications of armor? Are you looking for scale mail, chain mail, uh, breastplate? It would be more like breastplate. A breastplate? Um, yeah. I don't have any mithril on me. Um, but mithril armor, while a little more rare, um, is can also be found in certain shops. Um, I don't have any personal recommendations for magic shops, but there's a dime a dozen in the Cloud District, uh, if you'd like to take mm -hmm. a look there. Um, I heard uh, mithril's not just uh, for smithing. Um, a lot of people enchant uh, armor and infuse armor with mithril. Uh, it's not going to be pure mithril, but, you know, yeah, um, it will carry the majority of its properties, depending on how well the job they did. Um, if you like, How much would there. I need? Do you know how much we would oh, need? Oh, to make for... it yourself, you need quite a load. <laughs> to make uh, your friend uh, Maeve's there. Oh, boy. Um, it took um, a large chunk of my stock, but luckily right. um, I was willing to part with it because I... Without uh, you delivering it, I would have none. So uh, I was willing to do that for you. But for a breastplate, um, not a full set of armor and just uh, something for your size, uh, I'd probably only need about a quarter of what uh, you gave for Maeve's armor. So not that much. Only about... Okay. Actually, hold on. I can give you an exact estimate if you give me five seconds. <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. Rest. Wait. Oof. Um. Yeah. No. Uh. It's mithril. So. Uh, about ten pounds of mithril. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. I can. I guess I'll wander around and see if I can find some. It's pretty pricey. Um. May I ask why you would like uh, mithril instead of just a normal breastplate? Well, we... I lost a close friend um, that oh, had my condolences. the same armor, and I just wanted to make some like hers to wear. Well, um, if you'd like to personally craft it yourself, that's a different story, but... Um... If it's just having the mithril armor, 
I would highly suggest going with the first route of buying or having your own breastplate in the first place and just infusing it with small bits of mithril as it's going to be much less expensive than crafting your own. But if you'd like to craft your own, I'm not going to hold that against you. I understand all of the, um, you know, details regarding yeah. you and your friend. Okay. It wasn't Maeve, was it? Yeah, it was. Oh, dear me. I don't know if it's... Well, yeah, I guess it would be. I guess it would be out there, wouldn't it, DM? Since they had a funeral. Um, It's... It's like... It's public knowledge, but it's not like public knowledge like an announcement was made. Um, okay. It was just they shut off a part of town. So if you were from that part of town, you knew. Oh, okay. um, Ivan Burrow smithing is on the... Uh, Western side. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't do <laughs> car, cardinal side. directions. Yeah, it's, it's in the western side of town, so he wouldn't have actually heard about it. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's like out there, so I, I don't know if it'd be a good idea to kind of, you know, talk about it. I, no, I, I, I'll keep it to myself for now. But I'm truly sorry. I, thank you. I had a wonderful time crafting the armor with her, and of course you and your friends. Mm -hmm. My condolences. Um. All right, well, um, I still information stands. If you like to craft your own, I can be happy to help it uh, help you if you bring me the materials. But uh, if you're looking to you're looking to just have mithril in general, mm -hmm. I just I look to infuse it, which I can also do. But it'd be a much quicker process. But you're gonna have right. to, you know, I can give you a breastplate to also enchant. And then you could just get the mithril, or you could get the mithril and the breastplate elsewhere, depending on you know what you want to do with that. But that's okay. up to you. Well, you've given me some ideas, so I'll I'll see what I can find out first, and then of course I'll make my way back. Once again, if you need anything, let me know. My oh, door course. is always open. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Until... So, are you gonna look? around uh you know a few magic shops that you've been to previously well i was um, going to uh call Carter, yeah to okay. see if he might have any extra <laughs> hey you got any <laughs> extra <Never> mithril <laughs> around um cool 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 oh my god no we're not making that canon <laughs> no Why i not? will i will go out of my way to make anything but a terrifying funko pop bush be the awakened bush it's what do you mean terrifying it's cute look at those eyes in the face it looks like it has poison ivy oh, he's just like me dead. man it has no soul he's just like uh, mammoth <laughs> bush guy not, a, not behind those eyes dude Oh God! Okay, that thing um, wants to eat our eyeballs. It already right? has. It already has consumed many in its lifetime. <laughs> God, that's terrifying. Um, okay, so you call up Carter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Put a gold you... piece down. Dring, 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 dring. Please wait. Your call is very valuable. To uh, it gets cut off as Carter picks up. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. One moment, please. I am in the middle of something at the moment. Uh, I have carries a six. Okay, wonderful. But this is very good news. Um, Rictis. Yes. What can I do for you, my friend? Hey, uh, I have an odd question, request type thing. I may have an odd answer type thing. Uh, wait. Oh, good. Good. Um, you wouldn't by chance happen to have any mithril lying around, would you? <laughs> are you serious um yes i do i haven't uh i don't know if i've worked with any mithril uh recently it's not common uh, artifact go ahead another roll me another luck check oh, um this is gonna be uh nine or higher uh, okay we'll have it eight or below that's oh my one. gosh! Three. Oh my god! Oh, man. Uh, the rolls just aren't in it tonight. You need for to change me. your dice. Change your yeah, digital dice. Yeah, change your digital <laughs> dice. Okay. Get the shit out of here. Um, 
boy, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> so he goes, um, <laughs> actually, no, I, I've i uh, steered away from specific uh, Mithril-like metals because it's, a, it's become quite expensive um, yeah. due to a lot of mines shutting down recently and not having a lot of uh, Mithril accessible. Uh, it is not... Um, it is not financially uh, smart to be using that as a key ingredient in any of our craft at the moment. At least until the problems in the mines are solved. I understand. Okay, would, would you happen to know anyone in town that might have some? Uh, it depends. Um, I know there is a few, uh, a few crafters and inventors in the Cloud District. Um, that um, deal in similar metals, but I don't know if they have any in stock at the moment for buying a uh, right mithril. Yeah. How, how much are you looking to buy? At least ten pounds. Oof. <laughs> I mean, here's um, I, here's hear, the thing. No, hear me out before uh, okay. and you hear. Your one minute has expired. Oh, Please give another goal to continue your conversation. He'll pop in another gold. Thank you for your purchase. I am sorry, there was a brief connection issue. Um, let me give you a smarter idea, my friend. Um, okay. Mithril is a very commonly used for anything but weapons and armor. Um, it is very commonly used to make uh, fine objects because of its uh, blue and sparkly uh, appeal. If you look for teacups, uh, plates, forks, knives, things of that nature, and then you smelt them down into whatever you'd like to create, that could be a good way of purchasing them. And you could find that it's a, a uh, you know, common, uh, a common shop on the streets. Um, anyone who is into antiques or collectibles, something like that. That might be a better way of doing this in this current uh, kind of state okay. of mithril economy <laughs> okay that's i feel like that's going to be a lot of spoons to buy but i'll, well, I'll if you're see looking what i for 10 do. pounds uh yeah. yeah it depends on what uh, items you can find that are made in mithril okay well i, pr I appreciate the help of course if you need anything else just uh feel free to pop by and let me know all right we'll do thank you of course click click call in. <laughs> uh, just says click um <laughs> love that cool so are you gonna try and look around for antique shops and magic shops for random mithril tidbits yeah i can do that if you want to cut to somebody else while well, i'm doing that no 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 we don't have oh, to okay. rp each interaction okay <laughs> um go ahead this is just gonna be oh god i'm scared of giving you any more checks um this I, changed is gonna... my dice, dice. So. I did okay I did. okay 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 it's gonna be an investigation check um to, looking for how much uh mithril in such a short amount of time it's gonna be pretty high um yeah. you're looking for a dc 19 oh however dc 15 will find five pounds of it um uh, okay. for various different knickknacks and stuff like that dc 10 gonna find two pounds anything beneath that nothing um okay. dc19 you find enough to have 10 pounds of mithril altogether I'll, I'll i'll tell you the price for how much depending <laughs> on which we get once we get okay there, there we go dc19 DC investigation <laughs> oh my <laughs> right right we do what? have two inspiration dies if you'd like to burn for Which the dice last one pick? of the night. Well, I had the black and white ones, and then I went to the black and red. So I don't, I don't have like. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time digital, and if it still fails, I'm gonna move over to actual dice. No wait. What? Just do real dice. <laughs> <laughs> the digital world is dice? not with you. <laughs> okay. Let me get my dice. I forget. I can barely hear you. Oh, fuck me. Uh, one second. 
We can hear you now. I can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, this is this is a Dom saying this because I genuinely forget. Do we change it to one or two inspiration dies for this game? I think I it's. I don't two, remember. I think it's two. I thought it was two at the beginning. We've all kind of just been doing one. Okay. Though. I, I, yeah, we do one because we normally don't end up using I, them a lot. It feels so <laughs> generous. I always I, forget. I I forget. I always want to like save them for something drastic. I know. Jared, yeah. mind yeah. of a it doesn't matter. Mind of a steel trap. Do we have one or two for Friday? Do you uh, we have two for this. Yeah, we have two okay. for this one. All right. So if you'd like to, you can use one since you haven't rolled for the investigation check yet. <laughs> I did roll actual dice, and I can take a photo of it if you want me to. But it was I don't 19 believe nineteen on the dice, <laughs> and then I on have the die? I have plus eight to investigation. <laughs> okay. All right. I um, trust him implicitly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I call bullshit. Okay. Um, you... I rolled my grog dice. So. <laughs> oh hell yeah! I, I like that you switched. I, like again, if if you're rolling really sure, you just hate roll twenty. You can roll IRL. I don't care. Um, I I do the same for enemies. The uh, okay, cool. So that's a total of what? Uh, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Jesus. Um, yeah, that'll do. So. Here's the good part. The good part is you find enough trinkets to get 10 pounds worth of mithril. Mm -hmm. Problem is, they're all still mithril. Um, <laughs> so, um, if you're not going to try and haggle or try and fight any of the general prices, it's still going to be, for the entire set of 10 pounds... It's going to be 250 gold for all of them. You can attempt. It's not all in one place. So you can attempt, uh, if you'd like, um, to make me two separate persuasion checks. If you want to try and haggle price, or you can just pay full price. Well, but Rick says it's, it's you know, magic. It's Yeah. Know. He's not much of a haggler since he kind of came from a, I don't want to say a noble background, but well off his, his yeah well, his family didn't crust. ever have to really worry about gold so he doesn't really think about it that much so he would have just paid it cool. outright. Just outright 250 gold yeah um now this is dom talking <laughs> <laughs> the I, if you I, if you want to do this i absolutely won't stop you but the benefits from a normal uh a normal breastplate it already doesn't uh, give you uh, disadvantage on stealth checks mm -hmm. or anything like that. So this is just this could be magical armor, so it can't be destroyed by any non-magical means or any magical means up to the rarity of that. So yeah. if you like, you can you can change it to something that is a little more beefy in terms of AC if you want, because it is still ten pounds of mithril. But if you want mm -hmm. a breastplate, you can absolutely have it. I just wanted to warn you ahead of time: you're not going to gain too much in terms of like you know negating something on yeah. or something like that honestly this was all more for just like aesthetic type stuff okay. you know what i mean yeah like a, absolutely yeah. i respect it so you'd like to craft a mithril breastplate yeah um it's gonna take you i <laughs> you're crafting <laughs> just a breastplate um but it's still gonna take you the majority of the night if not all of the night he's he'll hunker down Okay, so you go back to Ivan Burrow Smithing. Ivan mm -hmm. pops open the back, um, lets you in, and with his assistance, um, I'll, I'll say, do you want to make a check with advantage, or do you want both you and Ivan to roll separate checks for this? Um, we can do separate checks. Okay. Um, roll me athletics, or roll me sleight of hand check. Um, or actually, um, uh, because you're an artificer and you're crafting shit, uh, I'll allow you to use your straight intelligence modifier in place of either of those. Okay, like. I'll use the intelligence modifier. Uh, let me look up his modifier. Because I do have it down, not on a stat sheet, but I remember. I rolled up 14 plus 5, so 19. 19, more than enough. Alright, that just means that... Ivan just needs to roll above at 12. And he has he has a plus 10. Okay. Um, so anything but a one or a two passes. 
Woo! Okay, I thought I was talking that in, out of existence. Okay, so 22. Um, nothing worried. By the by, tomorrow morning, you will have a mithril breastplate. And then he will... Uh, on the upper left side of the breastplate, he will carve in like a an M. Oh, that's so cute! Hell yeah! Good shit. It took us all of our inspiration dies <laughs> and a shit ton of in-game time, but you got worth it done. It. Stupid so D&D Beyond, it. but yeah, worth it works. It. Yep. Hell yeah. All right, so while Rictus is slaving away at the forge, anyone else doing anything? Um, Kipley did want to... Oh, right, cat. Stop. What? Sorry, I was looking at the general chat. Oh, here. sorry. The sad cat meme, and it was really <laughs> fucking sad. Oh, uh, Kipley did want to stop... Ah, uh, she'll look to... Duradon again surprised that he's there for a moment and then just be like oh did you need to go anywhere um wherever you go for the most part do you know anywhere that sounds like armor I'm looking for maybe it. like leather armor that has like you know little metal pieces in it something a little bit better uh yeah i know a couple of places um especially when it comes to armor and weapons and things of the sort uh yeah i should be able to navigate you to a space um Nine times out of ten, he's gonna navigate you to the guild where uh, is he, he <laughs> discounts the shit for it <laughs> Uh, yeah. We don't have to RP it. I, I was the, just, yeah. The guild does have a lot of basic adventuring gear, uh, including weapon, mainly non-magical um, weapons and armor, since magic is pretty fucking expensive. But uh, anything specific you're looking for? Uh, studded leather. Studded leather? Ooh. Enough. Uh, I believe, you know, typical studded leather is only 20... I thought it said 45. Well, at least nope, it is much more expensive. Uh, yeah. It is 45 gold. I go off PV most time. You're fine. That okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Fine. Um, do you want to buy it from the guild, or do you want to try and buy it from just a typical like leather worker? Uh, from the guild, you're not going to haggle. But if you want to try and buy it somewhere else, you can attempt to haggle. I should buy it from the guild. Sure. So you pop in, see the guild is hustling and a bustling. Um, as it is getting close, and it's now like just on the crest of um, this world's version of winter, uh, you can see everyone's now kind of like bundling up in these heavy kind of fur coats. Um, and go ahead and roll me, uh, go ahead and roll me a, a straight d twenty as well. Another luck check. Oh. Oh. D20. Bro! <laughs> this is Power Rangers Sorry. type shit. D20, go! <laughs> Do your thing. Uh, four. Oh, I've infected uh, everybody. You have. Cool. <laughs> um, I, you're gonna get a result either way. Um, you, you do see, uh, a, um, you see at least one familiar face. Um, as you are there, just because you know a lot of people. Um, <laughs> you're, you guys as a group know a lot of people now. Um, you see uh, Arlen Liren, uh, the floating legless sorcerer that you guys ran into in your um, in your original exam, your vassalship exam, is kind of just floating in front of the uh, Gil Hall board, looking at jobs, and just kind of gives you a nice little smile and wave as you walk by. Doesn't engage necessarily in our conversation, but just gives you a, a noticing hello. I think like there was a guild board. He's looking at the guild board. Yes. Hey, how are you? Um, it was uh, Kipri, right? For today. For today. Okay, wonderful. Um, 
What are you doing out and about? Looking for a job? Uh, no, looking for some uh, more protection. Ah. Well, good luck in your search. Uh, and uh, I can also, I did not get to uh, congratulate you earlier, but congratulations on the six. I heard you finally formed a uh, proper group. Her eyes kind of focus in and out for a moment before she just gives a little nod. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if you uh, remember, but uh, me and uh, Anon made a group together as well. We drag uh, Haldir and Urza in as much as possible, but it's currently kind of uh, just mission by mission group. So no overarching plot between the two of you. I'm um, well, you know, um, Anon and I work uh, hand in hand uh, together, but um, the others have kind of broken off to become freelancers. And um, if you remember Urza, the uh, shy girl with the shovel. Yeah, no, I remember Urza. Yeah, she was. She's kind of hard uh, to get. Um, to get her to do jobs off the island so she's just been kind of doing local work in the meantime but I know and I have left a few times to do some local jobs um it is a, it is a silly name but uh uh in total uh he would like to call us the frightening five. Oh, I love it that's really no I don't re I like that you like it it's very nice of you but I, I kind of I want, to, I think I want to do something else, you know? It sounds like we are intimidating, but I, I'm I'm not exactly frightening, you know? And he gestures to, like, him floating in the air. <laughs> Maybe to children, but... Anyway, uh, I did not mean to uh, interrupt your day. I wish you well, and um, once again, congratulations. It's good to see you uh, having success in your line of work. Yep. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. You as well. You see he plucks a job off the board and begins walking away. Uh, what's your... What's Kipley's passive perception? Uh, 15. 15? Um, you don't see the entire uh, name, but you do see just a brief bit of the title. Um, you see uh, it has foreign snatch. Just, you just see the one word says foreign snatch on it. Foreign snatch. I can I can type out the spelling for you <laughs> okay. in the general chat. Don't worry. <laughs> no comment. It's not the entire uh, no. title. Yeah, it's not Man. the entire title, but I'm sorry, y'all. Megan's constantly it's... in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, okay, no. Now, I look at it now, <laughs> but at the time, Dom is not thinking anything like that. Oh, sorry. Oh, but yes, <laughs> that is, you see, right. part of the title has that in it. Uh, she just kind of nods quickly. to herself. Oh. Uh huh. What area are we supposed to be in? Or heading to? What? what are you talking about? I'm following you. No, what area for the sailing? You got sailors for a reason. What area are we heading to? Uh, what? I'm looking for armor. No, Kipl where are we sailing to? What island? Oh. What landmass? Mi Mistrust. Mis Mistrust. Um, Doradon will look on the board to see if there are any um missions that are in that area, um, or objectives that are in that area, uh, specifically looking for any um killing or uh elimination based uh, so like bounties, objectives. okay? Yeah, uh, you do know bounty boards are separate from the guild boards, um, as Normally, guild boards have things to do with um, either Paradise Peak or council-related activity. 
um, as that's what vassals run through. Like, non-vassals don't really run for here. Bounty boards is anyone's game. Um, that is a different uh, setup. Uh, it does exist, um, but it is mainly run through the common guard as they are unaffiliated uh, with the council. They run, like, it's local cool. militias, basically. So if you'd like to look for bounties, you can do for that, but just, like... Uh, guild-related jobs for Mistrin, uh, you can absolutely look for as well. Just want to clarify the separation. Uh, but There's guild jobs, there. go ahead and give me another luck check. <laughs> um, to have a job in the area of Mistrin specifically related to elimination, you're going to be looking on a straight D20 or higher. You're looking for a 17 or higher. Yeah. So it's so, going to be pretty rare to get. All 20... We have 33,000 hours of time. Let's, let's, <laughs> I don't ask for not much God, but all through. Uh, that is going to be a... Ten. a 10. All right. Yeah. And you can use your inspiration if you like. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Guild-related jobs, putting in your area of the Mistrin? No. Um, also, go ahead and give me a history check. History, I think I'm bad at that. Uh, yes, I am. 18. Oh, um, that's where the 17 comes in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um, 18 uh, will get you to remember that you don't know a lot exactly about what happened, but like as you're seeing there's no jobs related to Mistrin, it slowly creeps into the back of your mind that Mistrin is no longer an operable town as about 25-ish years ago there is an explosion that caused the majority of the town to collapse in on itself so it's no longer really a habitable island uh, and it'd be very weird if there was jobs helping quote-unquote the people of Mistrin if there's not really an established uh, settlement there at the moment at least to anyone's knowledge do I know of, like, any activity within the area, like, since it's, you know, no longer an established place, is it, like, a smuggling location, or... Um, with an 18 uh, and your specific background, yes. You don't know the names of the groups, but you know it is a... It's not common smuggling, um, island or anything like that, like you ran into previously with the mining outlet. Um, but the, uh, area of Mistrin and the island itself has been rumored, hasn't been confirmed, but has been rumored, uh, to currently be used to house, uh, a large sect of, uh, bandits. Not pirates, but bandits. Um, the rumor is that they were originally the ones, um... Who were there when the incident happened uh and they looted everything that was valuable out of the town before they left and they currently come and go and just use it as like kind of like a base of operations uh to run out of since no one has really like the need or authority to go out there and arrest them so it's, they just kind of just got a free island out of the deal even though it's mainly destroyed and fucked but still a little pocket for them to call home. Uh, I think, uh, kind of in a in a in a fucked up way, um, since all of this is mentally processing, um, Doradon kind of smirks and smiles um, at the demise of an island and the realization that it has been inhabited by bandits. Um, because, you know, nine times out of ten, bandits aren't liked by people. Um, no. So he he, he kind of smiles uh, and thinks about, like, oh, people, the, no authority figures would be capable of getting out there. Low lives could probably want to hide out in this general area, you know, uh, since there's no, like, law system and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and he kind of looks down to uh, Kipley. Um, and he'll say, um, after, uh, after you're done getting your armor, do you mind, uh, accompanying me somewhere? Uh, 
Where? I'm gonna go to a, uh, a spot uh, that I haven't been to in a while. I've I've missed it so dearly. Um, yeah. <laughs> She kind of makes a weird face, and you see her, like, kind of squint, trying, like, wanting to go deeper, but she just pulls back. Are there going to be other people there? Oh, probably. I mean, surely, most definitely. Um, I'm I'm going to go look um, at a a uh, a board. It's um, honestly, it, it's kind of like a a um, a shrine of sorts for me. Um, I'm gonna go take a look and see uh, if there's any good bounties on the bounty board. And just so I understand the terms, if I say no and I go elsewhere, does that mean you do what you want anyways, or do you have to follow me? Um, I mean, I'm, I'll still go do what I want. It'll just involve communication with our uh, entity about where you're located and finding okay. you and, you know. All right. She doesn't give a response, but she just marches towards the armor. Cordana will uh, follow. Uh... Yeah, every now and then she just kind of stealthily looks behind her to see if you're still there. So. Oh. Uh, Chipley, I, I know you may not be much of a conversationalist, but I'm going to have to be with you for a while, so... Why, why, um, why do you think that? Why do you think I'm not much of a conversationalist? I mean, you just don't necessarily look the type to say words that don't need to be said. Well maybe maybe you you shouldn't you know judge a, a book by its cover the fact that that sentence took so much effort uh makes me feel like i'm not wrong but sure uh maybe i did judge prematurely um are you a conversationalist Silence. <laughs> How much farther is it to the armor? We're probably. Armor? The... <laughs> yeah. uh, you left the guild hall. You already have your armor. Shit. Okay. Look how wonderful this looks on me. And she stopped <laughs> putting it on. The long pause was Kipley putting on the armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, want to... <laughs> you want to test it out really quick? Oh god! <laughs> Such a friend. What's thing. that mean? I mean, armor is only as good as your ability to utilize it. That's why most people don't just put on any type of armor. You have to know how to how it feels with your body, become one with it, and typically the only way to be sure um, is to defend against a few attacks. Will we get in trouble? I mean, for sparring? Maybe in public, probably, but I'm sure there are locations, uh, especially near the guild um, and just other spaces in general where you can... Kipley cast Eldritch Blast at him. <laughs> Jesus okay. Christ! Like in the guild hall? He said yeah. it was fine! 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, go ahead and roll me a, roll me an attack <laughs> roll. Oh, that's great. Twenty six. I assume twenty six hits. That does. Yep, mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead and give me roll damage. Ten points of force damage. Oh wait, that's just one blast. One blast. I give uh, another well, blast. Well, yeah, when you cast it, you can. Yeah, so go ahead and roll. Also, like Duradon. Were you expecting this? Because I assume not. Uh, no, he was like he was mid. He was mid sentence. Yeah, wouldn't... go ahead and roll these with advantage, by the way, just to see if you crit. Because okay. this is this is him surprised. All right, there's the other one. Okay, so twenty six eighteen. Then go okay. ahead and roll the second second blast. Twenty two and and Okay. 22. Okay, alright, so that's 22. So that extra one hits, go ahead and give me other so damage. 10 and... 10. 20 points of force damage! <laughs> so Duraton, <laughs> as, you, as you're mid-sentence kind of explaining, you, you aren't like looking directly down at her, you're kind of looking around, kind of gesturing to the environment, like, I'm sure they wouldn't. My <laughs> Two beams of Eldritch energy, like, so Almost like the smash cuts where people get punched in slow motion and you can just see the force of the explosion like rock their cheek and just move their head to the side. You just watch as two beams of Eldridge green energy slam into your face. It doesn't like fully like snap <laughs> or twist your neck, but it forces you to move your perspective so you are looking to the right. You move to the left to see Kipley before another blast boof, continues to move your head off to the side. Where you finally end up with like a little bit of whiplash as you're just now forced looking back at a wall and 20 points of force damage bludgeon your face. Ooh, cool, cool. Um uh, you have you have one turn to do something before a whole bunch of other things <laughs> are gonna cool. happen. Uh, Duradon turns back to Kipley, uh, with a <laughs> smile on his face. Um, and he's in there. like, yeah, uh, and jumps up and down, um, <laughs> for the final kind of like landing is an open stance. Uh, and kind of releases uh, a a bit of a like a, a minor shockwave that kicks up a bit of dust. Uh, the tattoos shoot up the face. Um, he doesn't bother with the mask for this, um, and he, he's going to bonus action rage, of course. Yes. Uh, Jesus Christ! Pull out um, the the uh, Albert. Um, and recklessly strike down, uh, also making these uh, great weapon attacks. Sure. <laughs> you just roll. <laughs> uh, what AC am I looking to beat here, Kipley? Uh, with the well, new armor, should be. 14. Yeah, I just, I just, re I realized that I totally. This entire time, I uh, I was totally confused and fucked myself over. Uh, it's 14. I forgot 14. with my mage armor, I can't wear armor. You so. better. Yeah. Oh, because you have armor of shadows? <laughs> yes. Oh. Total, oh totally, God. completely stupid. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, well, no, with mage armor, it's 13 plus your dex. Yeah, so but I I can't wear armor with it, so buying this set of leather was completely okay. All right, and you did say you put it on, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Fourteen. So fourteen, 14 is the <laughs> very low AC to hit. Well I, well, I have a minus five to these attacks, so it's, it's also possible. reckless. So yeah, go ahead, roll with advantage. Jeez, oh, Jesus uh, Christ! Uh, <laughs> You're gonna one turn Kipley. <laughs> You're gonna one-turn Kipley. Pretty much. <laughs> um, Wait, what's your total HP? I do. 43. Okay. 43. Okay. So uh, she might live. I do want to say... But that's like announcing a woman's weight. I feel like you need <laughs> to say that, like, with a little more care to your tone. <laughs> my, my dear Kipley, what is thou HP pool? 
I would like to restrain from saying so oh. thank you. <laughs> you are quite all right, then. <laughs> we shall waive the damage <laughs> and all of the thought that comes with. Go ahead and roll damage for that natural 20. Uh, that is going to be a lot of fucking damage. Jesus. Uh, that is 13, 25, uh, 30... <laughs> 32. <laughs> yep. Yeah. For the first, uh, fuck off. For the yeah, first for the hit. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to bar so, me. We're level so five. Again, 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 again. <laughs> Playing this out in slow motion. Two blasts. Boom, boom. Three seconds go by. The rage immediately instills in you. And you watch as you take. It's, um, it's, a, it's your, um, halberd, right? Yeah. You take your halberd and just like you don't you in your mind you're not doing this to kill her. But you're just so genuinely surprised and pissed off that you go down in a full strike like you're trying to kill someone and the voice immediately pops into your head and goes, "Oh, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. no. This is not right. This is not right. You're going to kill her if you hit her again. Don't do it, Don. Don't Hellish do it. Not lawful good. Not lawful good." Um, hellish, rebuke? hellish rebuke. Sure, oh. go ahead. Dexterity saving throw. Uh, I believe at this level you have um, danger sense, right? Yeah. yeah, so you have you have advantage on that. That's a DC sixteen, I believe. DC sixteen. Cool. Yeah. It's a fail. It's a fail. Uh, Twenty four fire damage. Jeez. To twelve. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna reduce that down to twelve. Um, twelve through. Uh, oh, because I'm a good barbarian. Uh, <laughs> he's your bear bar. Okay.